From the 21st chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable now in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Be careful what you say yes to. Some of us have a hard time saying no, right? We say yes too easily or too often or to too many things, some less important that drain our time and energy away from greater priorities. It's time to end already? <laughs> I know one of the Maria's said to keep it short, but... <laughs> Jesus tells the parable in Matthew 21 today about the father with two sons. Dad asked the first son to go work in the vineyard. The son says, no. As a dad, I wouldn't be too happy. We're not happy with that kind of rebellious response, but later the son changes his mind and goes to work in the field. Dad asked the second son the same thing. He said yes, but he never went. He knew how to say the right thing. <clears throat> he knew how to please people. He knew how to please his dad. But he never took the first step to follow through. His heart wasn't in it. <clears throat> Jesus asked which one actually did the Father's will, and it was obvious, it was the first one, the one who seemed to be the rebel. <clears throat> be careful what you say yes to, especially those more important things. If you mean it, if you follow through and take that first step, it might change you, at least a little, and maybe more than a little. In the opening chapter of Tolkien's The Hobbit, you may have seen the movie, but the books, that and the Lord of the Rings, way better. Bilbo Baggins is visited by the wizard Gandalf, who says to him, I am looking for someone to share in an adventure I am arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone. Bilbo responds, I should think so. In these parts, we are plain quiet folk and have no use for adventures. Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things make you late for dinner. The next day, Bilbo is visited by 13 strange dwarves, along with Gandalf once again, and they all speak about this difficult and dangerous journey to this faraway place that Gandalf has chosen Bilbo to be a part of. Despite all of Bilbo's inner rebellion against even the thought of it, something in his heart awakens to the call, though he tries everything in his powers to shut it down. The next morning, against all common sense, and seemingly under pressure from Gandalf, Bilbo finds himself outside his comfortable hobbit hole and says yes to the adventure by taking the first step. Actually, he begins running in order not to be late to meet those 13 strange dwarves at the Green Dragon Inn. Saying yes changed Bilbo's life. It helps to say yes when you've already been chosen, but heads up about what you say yes to. My wife, Catherine, nearly 20 years ago, read about a whitewater canoe trip on the Copper River in Ontario she thought I would be interested in. My sensitive response was, it sounds like an expensive glorified boundary waters trip. I wasn't interested. But then a friend called who was going on that trip and said a guy on the trip had dropped out and would I be interested in taking his spot? I ended up saying yes. 
And as good as that adventure was, and I was a beginner in whitewater, lots of flat water experience paddling lakes, as good as that adventure was, it led to one even greater. When two years later, I would again travel with our guide, Cliff Jacobson, well known in canoe circles, down the North Knife River in northern Manitoba to Hudson Bay. Lots of white water. Three of us paddled and slept with loaded guns because we were in polar bear country. And we actually encountered five of them as we got close to Hudson Bay. In 2016, I had the opportunity to paddle the North Knife again, this time with one of my adult sons and my friend and his three sons. I'm so glad I eventually said yes to that first invitation to go on that Kopka River trip. The combined adventures with their difficulties and dangers were amazing. I'm glad my wife and my friend chose me to take that first trip. One more personal story. It was during my seminary internship in Jersey City, New Jersey, that Catherine came out to visit me. And during that time, I asked her to marry me. But the proposal came with a kind of condition, a qualifier that I might end up serving as a pastor in some place like Jersey City, so I suggested she think about it for a while. She thought thinking about it was a good idea. <laughs> Two days later, she said yes. We chose each other and said yes to the adventure of marriage. 39 years later, three adult sons later, we look back on the adventure of marriage and family with lots of joys, lots of great memories, great experiences, but to be honest, also plenty of tensions, our own struggles, and our share of heartaches. If we could do it all over again, we would do some things differently. At least we'd try. But we all learn as we go, right? We all learn as we travel. But we'd the, the love, the commitment run deep, and we would still say yes to the adventure. In case you haven't noticed, life is an adventure, but what you may not think about is that faith is also an adventure. Faith and life are part and parcel of each other. They're woven together. You can't separate them. It's all about being chosen, saying yes to selected things, taking that first step into the unknown, even when there might be difficulties and dangers. I think we domesticate Jesus way too much. That we think of Jesus as this really nice man, quote unquote, or this really religious guy. I'm not saying that Jesus is Gandalf, but I think he's a heck of a lot more like that wild wizard than he is like some of the other images we have. I think Jesus is saying to me and to you and to all of you ninth graders, I'm looking for someone to share in, a, in an adventure I'm arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone. How will you respond? 47, being confirmed at our Savior's today. 47, affirming their baptism, saying yes to a journey of faith that will be their faith, that will be your faith not the exact same as moms or dads or aunts or uncles or grandmas and grand grandpas, your faith. Your parents chose you, like I said to the kids. They said yes to you at your birth. And so far, they've continued to say yes to you every day of your life, even though I would bet that all of you have some tensions, conflicts in your relationship with parents, if you're normal, as there is in any relationship in every family. Your parents, your sponsors, and a congregation said yes to you when you were baptized, and we are all saying yes to you again on this, your confirmation day. But each of you have also been chosen by God, in whose image you have been made. It was God who first said yes to you on the day you were born. It was God who also said yes to you when you were baptized. 
And it is God who is and will continue to say yes to you for the rest of your life. You may not know it, but you bear on your head probably your forehead an invisible tattoo. It happened at baptism when the pastor marked the sign of the cross and said, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. As God declared to the people of Israel through the prophet Isaiah, I have called you by name, you are mine. God also says to each one of us individually, I have called you, Bruce, by name, you are mine. Nothing and no one can ever erase that invisible tattoo that you bear. Nothing and no one can take away the truth that you are and you will remain God's child forever, no matter what. No matter what. So God has already declared a big fat yes to you, and now it's your turn. It's your turn. You've been chosen for this adventure. It's your time to say yes and to step out on your own journey of faith. You won't travel alone. Others will travel with you. We will travel with you. It's a journey that few regret. I know I haven't. It's a journey that can shape and guide your whole life. I know that it has mine. But it's an adventure, which means there will be some difficulties. There may even be some dangers. And sometimes it seems like you're traveling with strange dwarves and a wild wizard. So heads up as you say yes. Amen.